Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor scale, fret 0, otherwise known as open position, and fret 12, focusing on the F note. Get ready and some coffee. Get ready. Tonight's the night. Because most of us spend way too much time picking our brain. Time better spent picking our guitar. Maybe I could pick your brain later. Okay, but it's just a pile of peanuts up there. Nor possibly our ear. More precisely, you know, I think we should start by picking our ear, but just a little bit. Fingers in the ear. Brilliant. What's next? Shouting boo? So that we can get the wax out. We have no time to waste. Let's get this sample of wax, the hyperspectrographic analyzer. So that then, when we do pick the guitar, we can actually hear it. But then we need to stop picking out our ear, you know, after we get the wax out and just focus on picking the guitar at that point. Stop scratching your ear, man. It's gross. Cool. So you have to do things in the proper order. It wasn't me. It was my foot, dude. Because if you get too obsessed with picking at your ear, you may well end up picking your brain. Literally. Bad. Fingers in your ears, boys, till you can feel the brain. Now, I think, I think that totally happened to me one time. But I don't think it was a good idea. I mean... I, I generally try to pick my brain as little as possible because because I don't know about you, but all my brain ever does is talk crap about me. Believe me, nobody picked your brain. He was born with it. I'm telling you, my brain is worse than Phil. That guy talks more crap about me. My dang brain is picking on me rather than the other way round for crying out loud. Don't wake up the cow. <laughs> That's called cow tipping. And it's like, hey, brain. I'm the one doing the picking round here, dang it. Oh, that so stings me! Man, I wish I could get a hold of that little... I'm the one doing the picking. But hey, I'm in charge, right? You best shut up. Shut up. You shut up! Because, because, now that I have the wax out of my ears, you're totally exposed, brain. You're totally exposed to be picked on. Literally. But, luck luckily for you, the guitar's more worthy of my focus picking practice than you are, brain. What? What? You are not worthy of this spot now. So you could just, you could just keep jabbering all you want. You get back to me on the job thing. <laughs> like, like Biff from Back to the Future, Biffifying to the Breeze. Chicken! McFly! Well, I'm like, whatever, man. I don't even care. Hey, nobody calls me Tia B except my best friends and my worst enemies. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You can just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project can help to orientate us. So let's go back to the first tab for that overview. We're looking at the C major scale and related modes. We started in open position, which we defined as frets 0 through 3 on our fretboard here, noting that this E represents the low or heavy string for us, the one closest to the ceiling and the funnest way to map out the notes in open position is usually to construct the chords from the notes in the scale starting with the one chord in this example that of course being C major which we mapped out in open position and discussed in detail. We then went to the four chord because it also has a major chord construction mapped it out discussed it in detail same with the five chord then back to the two chord which has a minor chord construction the three chord the same the six chord the same and then the seven chord which has a diminished chord construction if we were to map out all the notes of all the chords then we would basically have the notes in the c major scale and related modes which would look like the blue notes in essence here in open position we then jumped up to the middle of the guitar to learn that position not starting with chords but rather with scales first the five note pentatonic scale and then adding the two other notes to get the major scale and thinking about it in terms of the c major but then also focusing in on each of the notes in the scale basically looking at the different modes and how we can tie those in to what we did in open uh, 
position, although we're going to talk more formally about modes later. We then did the same thing for the next position up. We discussed the pentatonic scale, the major scale, how it can blend into the prior position and how we can use it in alignment with the open positions that we learned. We talked about each of the notes in the uh, scale there, in essence, each of the modes basically in that position. We did the same moving up to the next position, looked at the pentatonic scale, the major scale, how it blends into the prior positions and the open position chords. And then we looked at each of the notes or in essence modes in that position. And now we're looking at this position here doing the same thing. In the past, we have looked at the five note pentatonic scale up here as well as the seven note scale. We fingered uh, the scale and now we're going to be focusing in on the four chord, basically making it the tonic. So the, the fourth, which is the ninth note or note nine, which is an F. And when we do that, we're basically kind of playing in Lydian, but we'll talk more formally about modes later. We're basically just gonna say that that's gonna be our uh, tonic and therefore our point of focus. All right, let's do a quick recap of the color coding. On the bottom layer, you can imagine that there's a blue layer on the bottom for all of the colored notes, and those are gonna be all seven notes in our major scale as well as related modes. So that's on the bottom of everything that has a color on it at all. And then on top of that, we put the five notes in the pentatonic scale, remembering that that pentatonic scale ties to beautifully the major scale and the related minor. Not so much to the other modes, although you still can use it with the other modes, but you have to think, okay, if I'm gonna be playing around the F in this case, or the fourth note, then I have to think what's gonna be the most important note that is not in the five notes. And obviously that F is it. That's F is not in the five note uh, the five note pentatonic, but it's gonna, so if you think about the pentatonic and adding the F, then that's one way you can think about it, or you can just think about the seven note uh, major scale, or you can think about it in terms of a mode, the Lydian. So it's best to kind of do all of those things so that you see how all this stuff kind of blends together. I'm basically gonna think about it as though we're in the, the major scale playing as though the fourth is basically the tonic. And then again, we'll talk more about modes uh, basically in future presentations more formally. All right, and so, and so then within that, we have the chord construction that we built out on the note that we're focusing in on, which will construct a major chord construction, F major chord. The one of that chord is this gonna be the light green, that's gonna be our major point of focus. And then the third is gonna be our second most important note in red, and then the uh, fifth, is going to, of this chord is going to be our third most important note and it's in yellow then we have these brackets that we cut the guitar into chunks within and we started looking at the uh this breaking of the guitar out in the middle on basically fret five which you can call the which you can call uh, a g or i call it the first position you can call it a g position but remember if you call it a g position you have to make sure that you're, you're tying it into the major chord, even though we're focused on the four chord, which is also a major chord, but we're, we're focused in on it as the four chord of the related major, which is a C major. In other words, if I was to look at it as, as a G, I have to think about it in relation to this C major, which would have the notes here and this within this position It'd be here, boom, and I could see kind of, oh man, what did I do? That I would have boom, 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 boom. That's kind of like the, why is this underneath? I want this on top. And so that's gonna be kind of like this G shape. If it was in open position, it would be a G. But if I was to move that shape up here and you can imagine that we barred off the, these back here, so I could play it like this or like this to two halves of it, then that would be a G shaped C major but we're not focused on the the c right now we're focused on the four chord which is the f so we're looking at this f so within this position you've got this basically uh leaning uh back f it's basically a c shape which would look like this you can play it a few different ways uh, and you can mute this string if you played it like that or 
you could play it like this, grabbing this string back here, boom, boom, boom. You have that little D shape down here, bam, bam, bam. And that this, this finger right here is what leads into the C shape. That's why it's, if you look at this D shape and I lean it back, it's a D. But if I lean it forward, it's part of basically the C shape. So it's a C shaped F is one way that you could think of it. We'll talk more formally about the cage system later. Uh, just a quick note though, you might say, hey, look, that F, just to point this out, fits uh, within basically this G shape. And you might say, well, wait a second, because the shape that we're looking at, which is open position, and this shape is what I call shape number four, which you can also call a C shape. But how can I call that a C shape if I can also play this shape up here, which is basically the same C shape kind of fits in there and in, with an F major chord instead of a C major, right? And, the, and the, the rationale for that, the reason for that is that if you looked at, at just these three notes, then the three notes are going to be unique. But if you look, look at how this fits into the five note pentatonic shape, it's still going to be uh, unique. Whereas if I look at this F shape, the F fits in here, you can see the F fits in there, but it doesn't fit into the pentatonic because the F right here isn't part of the five notes of the pentatonic scale of the C of the related C. So it fits into the seven note position, but it wouldn't fit into the same five note position. So that I'm just pointing that out because if you're naming the shapes by, by the related shapes in open position, you can tie them into the pentatonic shape, which will be unique, and then build the other two notes around it. So that's another reason why the pentatonic is can be quite important to help you to kind of visualize the fretboard. But in any case, we'll talk more about that later. So then if I move from this shape up to this shape, I would call this orange one shape uh, number two. And if I go back to the related major, you can call it an E, right? Because if I pivot around that shape, then I'm pivoting around this note. It's boom, uh, here, 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 duh, duh, right? And if I move that back here, that would be an E major. So if I move it uh, up here, we've got the the uh, E major shaped C major. But we're not looking at the C, we're focusing in on the F. So the F is right below it. So if I look at that, you basically have this boom, 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 boom which is kind of like an A shape, right? So here's basically my A shape that would be here. And now, and I'm, I'm leaning back to pick this one up and I'm just barring uh, these three off. So that's gonna be in essence, our, our A shape. And again, you can, you can think about the same kind of idea. This is our A shape over here with relation to the C. This A shape again fits as well for the F major, but the only reason it fits is because it's fitting within the seven note. It wouldn't fit in the same shape for the, pen, the five note pentatonic. So again, we'll talk more about that later possibly. So then if I go to this one, to this one, shape uh, number three, uh, we could call that a D shape. And the reason we might call it a D shape is because if I look at once again, the related major, the C right here, then I can lean that forward. This goes boom. Uh, to pick up that C and then this G and then that E, or you can see this like D shape right here. But if I lean it back to that C, then it's a D. If I leaned it forward, it'd be going to the C shape, which we'll see in the next shape here. But I'm not looking at uh, the C, I'm looking at the F. So the F we saw, it had that basically A bit right there, that A kind of shape. But if I lean the A shape forward, I have the G uh, shape. So I could see if I go from this, Du, 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 right there, boom, boom, boom. That's the top bit of like a, a, a G shape if it was in open position. And the bottom bit, I can hold these three down and then I can hold these three and then put my pinky down there to get the bottom bit of that kind of G, that's a, a G shaped F major, right? And then we're gonna go from that position three to position four, which is at the nut, at where it repeats fret number 12. So the notes here on fret number 12 are the notes at the nut, meaning open position, if we just played the open uh, notes over here. So now this position is great because now 
Uh, it's it, if you don't have a long enough guitar, it can be kind of frustrating. But that's why I pulled out the electric here. So we got we got a position that I can finger up here, and we can also readjust what we learned in open position when we didn't learn it by scale shapes, but rather by chord construction, and then try to recognize this shape, even though the fingering is different because I don't have to finger the nut down here, and I do have to finger basically what would be the nut once the fretboard repeats, which is actually quite confusing. Uh, so, so that's something that we're gonna basically focus in on uh, at this point in time. All right, so once again, we're focusing around the F. So to do that, if you wanted to practice like your, your F and, uh, and practicing playing around the F, you could basically play, if I was to do this in open position, in the key of like C, and then throw in an F from time to time. But if you want to really practice the F, then it would be better to make that the tonic, so make that the center point. How do you do that? Well, you basically start and stop, mainly, on the F. Now, if, and, and if you do that, we can call that playing a mode. That's basically going to be the Lydian mode, but I'm not going to focus so much on calling it the Lydian mode or renaming the numbering system, but rather just say, hey, look, I'm just playing the same chords and whatnot. Everything's the same, and I'm going to play around the four, so the numbering system is all the same, and we'll talk more about the modes more formally uh, later. Now the Lydian to me is a little bit harder to make that. It's like the hardest one really for me, it's other than uh, trying to make the seven the one, right? But uh, Locrian or whatever, but I'm gonna, but, but so, so you might have to play around with it a little to, to make it feel like a resolve down. Obviously the, the first is an easy one to do. The relative major is easy to make that. The tonic, the Dorian's pretty easy. All the rest of them are pretty easy to make the tonic. This one's a little bit more tricky to kind of make it resolve back home. So if I'm playing on the on an F, maybe I've got a C, A minor, E minor, C, and you might be trying to put a, a 7 in there to get a resolve. So in other words, we can use our kind of trick, which is basically we can look at the fifth of whatever chord we're trying to resolve to, which is a C. So there's our C. And, and so I could say C to the, to the F. If I take that C and, and I add uh, the dominant seven in essence, which is I'm putting my pinky down here, then that might give me a little bit more resolve. Just a couple things to keep in mind as we're kind of uh, picking through that. That's cheating a little bit, meaning we're t we're moving we we put our our finger in the lava in the white area. We don't want to touch those white notes, man. But, but we, uh, we put our finger in the lava right there because if you just have a little bit of flavor, then, then it'll, uh, it'll give you that, that resolve. Okay, so, and by the way, when you, when you finger that, what's happening is you play the C, you're playing this, this one right here, A sharp or B flat, however you're, uh, you want to call it, note number two, I'll call it. <laughs> and that'll give you uh, the resolution because it's taken a half step down uh, uh, to hear when we play the F is basically going to give you that resolution. All right, so just keeping that in mind. All right, so how, how can we practice this? couple different ways we can do it. One, I should be able to play basically everything in either of these positions. I already know that basically in the open position here because we learned all of these chords in open position. So if you didn't spend all that time doing that, that's okay. But we probably know a few more of these chord constructions in open position here and then then Theoretically, then, all we have to do is convert all those chords to, to a finger in position that we can play up here, which means we're going to use a few more bar chords and whatnot. But that's obviously a good practice uh, to just basically play around the F over here and see if you can mirror the same thing with chord constructions that you can use while barring off when necessary this fret. Now, I'll spend a little time with that, but we don't want to spend too much time with that because... I've only got like one chord mapped out over here. So we might do another exercise maybe later to focus on that more specifically. So, but, but that's one thing you can do. You can kind of play what you're doing over here, kind of noodle around with it. And see if you can mirror those same chords over here uh, and, do, and just do the same thing with this mirroring type of technique. The next thing that we can do is, is we can basically 
uh, play you know within open position and noodle around possibly uh, the F and then once again see if I can mirror the same kind of noodling around that F over here and that'll help me to recognize that this is the same shape as this shape even though my fingering is going to be different and then of course we can play different chords in open position because we know the open position better and then possibly just jump up to the F as we noodle around basically the F to just get a feel of the the the, the notes around it uh, as I think of it as, as the four chord uh, in this position. And then we can also think of it in terms of how can we blend this position of position four back into the position three, basically pivoting around that note so we can start to play horizontally, moving from shape to shape, and then bring that back to shape uh, two, back to shape one, and then to five, and then to four, and see if we can come up with some kind of lines or just get some ideas that we can start to move up and back from the guitar while keeping the F as basically our central point uh, playing around in essence the four. All right, so let's first by just getting the, uh, the, the sound in our, in our minds of playing as though the F is the center, meaning we're playing the fourth as the center, which means we're getting a Lydian sound in our mind. So if I play it back here, I'm gonna start with this note. So instead of starting with an E, the position will be the same. I'm gonna be starting with the F though. So let's put this around here. We're gonna go from here, and then we're gonna to go to here. Now you could rearrange the numbering system to do that in your mind. And, and so I'd say this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And that's one way that you can do it. And that would mean that you switched it to a Lydian, but I'm gonna to try to keep it as the four and count through it from four to four. So I'm making the four the center, and I'm saying this is gonna be four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four. So now we're on this F, and then I'm gonna bring that F to this F. So I'm gonna say, now this is going to be the uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna go four, five, four, just to pick up that last bit of the shape. So I went five, four, and then I'm gonna go down the other way. So now we're gonna go from this four, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six, five, four. And that brings me down to this F, and then I'm gonna bring that to there. And so I'm gonna say this is gonna be oh, uh, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six, five, four. Kind of get that in our mind and then I can do the same thing over here in the open position now I might start out by saying okay let me try to play that uh, let me try to play through that by fingering imagining I'm fingering the nut which is actually pretty difficult to do so let's say I'm gonna say this is gonna be I'm gonna play it as though it's the one again like it's the Lydian one to eight so I'm gonna say this is gonna be one uh, two, and then I'd be playing the nut here. Three, four, five, and then I'd be playing the nut. Six, seven, eight, and so that would be F to F. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time adjust my fingering because now, of course, I would normally be putting my pointer finger up here on the F to start out with. And so now I'm going to, and I'm going to call it the four, going from four to four instead of one to eight. So it's going to go one, two, and then open is three, four, five, open, six, seven, eight. Oh, I did it from one. I did it from one again. Let's do it from four. So I'm going to say this is going to be four, five, open, six, seven, eight, or one, uh, two, three, four. And so it goes from four to four. And then we're going to go from this F down to this F and do the same thing. So I'm going to say this is going to be the four here. Four, open five, six, open seven, eight, or one, two, open three, four. So now I'm on this F. I'm just going to say four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six, five, four. So now we're on this F. And then I'm going to bring that F down to, 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 to this one. So now we're going to say this is going to be 
couple times getting that Lydian feel uh, in our mind so now so if we look at the F major chord then in open position we actually are still using a bar chord which will typically look like this so we can call this an E shaped F major because we're basically taking this E shape and moving it up to a bar position which is difficult to do both in open position and way up here because you're kind of scrunched together up top so oftentimes people will learn to play this this way, meaning instead of going from here, duh, duh, whoop, hold on a second, from we would have this note, uh, I did it again, I did it again, this note, this note, this note, this note, this note, this note, you're gonna take this finger and put it down here. You could bar these two, but I think it's most comfortable just to play these notes right there. And so that looks like this, uh, or you can basically just play these three Boom, boom, boom. And that's probably the most convertible, easy way to play it up top. Now, the nice thing about the F is that is that it converts exactly up top because it's a bar chord that we play in open position anyways. It's a little difficult to finger it up top. So over here, we'd be playing this, uh, this note. It goes uh, dune, dune. Uh, wait a sec. It goes boom, 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 boom. But then we might take our finger from here and put it down here. And so now you've got this boom, 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 boom. And then again, you could play just these three. So it would be boom, 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 which is probably the easiest thing to do within this register since it's pretty tight up here uh, to play. And you're playing the higher register anyways. So it's not like you're getting that booming sound. You're probably trying to get a higher, a higher register sound in any case. So, so those three are probably going to be a nice uh, way to play it. So there's going to be that. Now, a couple different different ways that we can play that same chord is that you can finger like these two, boom, boom, boom. That's inverted. So, so now the F is on the bottom. And then you have uh, this structure uh, here. Da, da, da. But I could play this, this, and this, meaning like this shape boom 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 and then that's another way that we can play it but again in this higher register it's pretty tight to do some of those alterations so you're probably going to be playing it you know something like that all right so then uh if we were to convert to our other shapes the mate if we were trying to make it a, like a major sound playing around the four just remember some of the other shapes that we have if this is our F over here, I can convert that perfectly over to here. The C up top is played like this, right? We see our C here. I can convert that perfectly over here if I want to and even ring out this uh, G, uh, ring it out if I, if I felt like doing that. Or I can mute it, which isn't a perfect C, but we can play the C also this way and we can play the C duh, 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 like that. So we can kind of noodle around going from the F to the C and then the F to the C if we wanted to in the two positions. And then we, we see that uh, we had the G position uh, is like this. So it would be uh, boom, boom, do, 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 do. Uh, if I was to move that up top to here, same G position, boom, boom. But I can't play these three open so I can convert my fingers to this to play that top bit boom 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 or to like this to play the bottom bit right and then if we'll look at the minors a little bit more detail later but we have our a uh minor which is played like uh this so we have our our open a duh, duh, duh. so if i move that all the way up to here then then we'd have uh the a boom 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 and instead of fingering that i could just play it like this if i wanted to or i can convert my fingers to in essence the bar chord and then the D minor looks like this so if we had our D minor like this we play that open D but if I don't want to play that open D I can just move this whole shape you know up to here and just play the bottom uh, part of it up top in the higher register so right so so ju -ju -ju that we're going to be playing so boom boom uh, boom and then if I wanted to if I wanted to pick up that D 
then I'd have to play it like that. We'll talk more about it later. And then of course the E minor would be like this, which would be basically the bar chord. So if I move that, you know, all the way up here, I could bar that off or possibly play it, you know, in a different uh, format. So if you want to play with those different chords, you can and just convert them. But because we only have one chord mapped out, I'm not going to spend as much time uh, doing that here. The next thing that we can do is basically noodle around in open position just around the F and see if I can mirror the same kind of thing up here in, in this position. So let's look. So let's imagine now that we're going to be playing around this F and see basically what is around that F. So if I focus in on that F, the most important notes are probably going to be the A because that's going to be the third. That's going to give me my flavor. And then I've got my fifth up here, which is going to be uh, the C. There's my power chord. So if I was on this F up top, I could play the whole thing like this. I could play just those top two, which gives me basically you know, that power chord. And, so, and then the other thing that's kind of weird about this kind of like Lydian is that I also have this one here, that B. So if I play those at the same time, it's gonna give us that kind of tensiony, diminishy type sound. And this one behind it, this E is gonna give me basically that leading tone. So if I was to think about it from the position of the pointer finger, I might use my uh, middle finger here and think about it, the, the, the shape up top is from, so it goes pointer, middle uh, I mean, to the ring finger and then underneath it's like the opposite pointer ring finger to the C right and so that's uh, it's also sometimes useful to be putting my pointer finger on this A because then I have the heart of, of the, 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 the first and the third and then I can reach up to this C too so I have it. I also note that this whole this whole thing is good, so anything underneath is good. So I have this. Now let's see if we can think about that same kind of fingering over here, which where of course the fingering feels different. I'm still basically to make my full chord using a full bar chord. So I have that. I still have the E behind it, which is open, leading tone. And then I have this uh, B underneath it here, which is going to give me that tensiony sound. And then I always think about like these boxes together in open position, boom, 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 boom. And then these, so like double stop, double stop, double stop. And then you've got this, right? try to mirror a couple things around this F and play something at least similar, you know, up top. So let's say that we're going to kind of play around this, this area. So I'm going to say, all right, let's play like, uh, say if I played F and then back to the E, G, E, F. If I did that up here, we're going to say, all right, F, E, G, E. Go back here and let's play something like, all right, I'm on the full bar chord. So then we're going to go back here and say, okay. Something like that I did. And then we're going to go back on over here and say, okay. Here and say okay. So we could try to mirror back and forth. We could also, of course, then try to say, well, what if I just play some chords uh, over here in open position since I'm more comfortable with the chords over here, and then see if I can jump to this note and focus in on this note where I probably am less familiar with this shape up top, and then I'm going to focus around maybe like this area. So I'm going to say, all right, if I play like,
okay, well, what if I focus then on this F over here? We could do the same kind of thing and say, all right, what if my focal point was on this F? So then if I tried to mirror the two things in, in both shapes, I might use this position instead of doing this. I use this position and this position over here, or maybe even just this, these three notes, and then say, okay, what can I play around that F? So around that F, I have then right behind it, the E, then ab above it is gonna be my third. There's my probably second most important note. And then right above it, I have uh, the C, and then down below, that's all, always going to be a pretty nice uh, third that's always happening basically right below it. So if I'm looking at that F, I'm going to say, all right, so now within here above it, I have like the double stops, these two, these two, and these two. I often think about this little box kind of together. So I've got these double stops. And then if I'm on this F, I know I have this A right below it here, so I can always kind of end off on basically these three notes possibly, or I can end off, say, on these three notes, which is a little bit more difficult to do, but I have then double stop, double stop, double stop, double stop, and then, and then if I mirror that over here, I have this, where I have then these double stops, these two, boom, 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 and boom, boom. So that's gonna be these two, these two, open two, and then I can end it with my E formatted this way, which is my most comfortable E. And then I have right below it, there's my, there's my F, I'm sorry, not an E, an F. There's my F right there, there's your A right below it as well. And then, so there's that basically smaller shape that I usually play it in open position like this, putting that C, you know, on top of it. So if we were to mirror a couple things and try to say, okay, so here's our F up top. So let's say we start with an F here. So now let's say that we go from this F down to this F. We're gonna say, all right, let's focus around that one and say, what do we have around there? Around there, we have this whole little bit down below, which I usually think if you think of it from the standpoint of the pointer finger in this position, you've got this box. It's, it goes from uh, the uh, pointer to middle to pinky, pointer to middle to pinky. So, and then the, the note we're focused on, of course, is gonna be this F right here, which is a little bit difficult to make that kind of the tonic, you have a shape that you can do right here, which is going to be this F, the C, and the A, but that's a little difficult to finger down here, and it's inverted. So when we go back to our actual chord, we're probably gonna reach up from the C again, even down here and go up here, so that we get something that's gonna sound more F-like with the F and the bass. So then, so then if we're noodling around here, we've got this whole, this little box. And that same thing down here, if I was to play my F over here, then I think about it as basically this box is open, which is great because if I play it this way, then my finger is already on, 
you know, this F right here. So now I can kind of noodle around double stops, double stop, double stop. So I've got this. And so we can noodle around like that. So I can try to mirror that. So I can play with an F and then noodle. And then I can do basically the same thing here, right? But I'm going to play it a little bit shorthand. And then we can go back here and play double stop, double stop, double stop, double stop. Double stop, double stop. I could do that same thing here, something like this. Double stop, double stop, double stop, double stop. Go back here. Go back here and say, alright. So we can do some mirroring uh, type of stuff like that, and then of course we can play our chords over here and see if I can just target this position as I go back and forth between the chords. So I could say, all right, I'm on an F. Where's my F? It's right there. And then maybe like a C. A minor. F. And jump up to this F. And then like an A Kind of go back and forth now if, let's try to connect the f and see if i can connect it back to the last shape and see how we can practice focusing around that f as we bring it from this shape let's say we first look at this f up top and bring it back to the last shape which is basically going to be like this this shape so in the prior shape then if i'm looking at uh this this f then we're looking at like a g-shaped F, right? So if I looked at it this way, that would be our G shape. If I lean it back, it's going to look like this. So we had in our prior position this uh, F, but if I go up to the top, I have the C, A, and the F, and then I have these three, which is like our A shape, and then down here I've got these three, and I can reach up with my pinky, and so those are the shapes that we have, right? What The top half, middle part, and then the bottom part of like a G-shaped F major uh, chord. So let's say that if I was doing this first and I have my, my position like this, that's going to be my F. How can I blend that in and basically possibly walk up to get to where my pointer finger is up here so that I can turn that around and play something basically uh, within this position that we've been looking at? Well, the easiest spot would, of course, be that my... And, and again, you don't have to start there because I could easily just say, oh, I'm just going to move my pinky up from here right so you might say well I can move this pinky up to here and that puts me right into my position that I want to be in but oftentimes people are going to be starting with their pointer finger to get their their pointer finger up there and it's fun to kind of walk with the pointer finger so I can kind of try to get it up to this position playing some basically some rips or some lines along the way so if I'm back uh, in this position and my pointer finger, I'm back one, I should be right here. I know in this position I have this whole column here and I have this whole column here that I can play. So I can obviously just walk up. And just walk it up that way. And so that's, so that's one way that we can do it. We can walk it back the other way. We have this position here. I can break this. All right, and then we could do the same thing going down. And let's say that maybe I don't want to get to that F up top, but I want to move down to like uh, this F, for example. So then again, in this position, 
I have basically everything, uh, these two columns open to me so I can play within here as much as I want. And then I have a nice like double stop uh, between, uh, oh no, what did I do there? Oh man, it's, it's all over now. So we've got these two and then these two and then, and then these two, which will lead me back into that. So I can say, okay, if I was playing like uh, this bit here, I've got these here and then I've got double stop, double stop, double stop. And that's gonna lead me basically into that sliding up into that F. So I can kind of walk it up that way. So if I was playing, walk it down to this one uh, down here. Well, in that case, I might be playing this F, maybe I'm not playing that, maybe I'm playing the F this way with just these three notes. So I could reach up, I could reach up to that F or I could just play these three or reach down here. So I might be playing my F like this way or I might be playing it this way in this position or this way. And then if I wanna walk it down, again, these two columns, all these, this whole column is good. So I could just do I've got my double stops down here and that basically brings me up so now this finger is on this F which of course I can turn around to this which is kind of difficult to finger or I could basically turn it up to this so if I'm playing so if I'm playing my A shaped F it would be an A shape if it was leaning backwards the bottom of the G shape if it's leaning forward there's my F so it up that way and let's say okay well what if I connect it back one so there's my F here and let's say that we walk it back now I'm in this shape which would basically be uh, within my my shape number two in essence if I look at the F construction within it we're gonna have an a uh, type of shape so you can see these three are kind of like my middle position and if I can get my pointer finger up here then I can kind of lean uh, that shape forward. So if I'm in this position in shape number two, easiest way to do that is to say, okay, well, there's my A shaped F. So I might try to say, okay, I'm gonna try to get my pointer finger from here basically down to there. So I can just think logistically going from the F to the G back to the A here. Boom, 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 boom. And then I've got my double stops possibly double stop here takes me up to here so now I'm, I'm playing these same three but now I'm leaning forward which I can reach this way or I can reach up this way and go into that shape and then I've got my same kind of problem bringing uh, my fingers basically over here up to pivot it around one of these positions so I and now I'm pivoting up, and up in my current position up top so we could do something like that. We could say, okay, what if I was down in this shape and instead of going down to that F, I just want to bring it up uh, to this F. So we could be, say, uh, in this shape and then I, maybe I bring it back. And double stop, double stop, double stop, which would basically bring me to within here, right? And then I can play around in here. couple strings just noodling around until I basically get my pointer finger up here and then uh, maneuver it forward I could do a similar thing if I wanted to noodle around on the bottom bit but let's go to the next one and say okay what if uh, what happened there control C oh no uh, say there's too many things you have too many things happening well no uh, So let's say we bring this one back. So that was leaning up to here. And so now let's say we go back to the next position, which is kind of inside of our position uh, one here, leaning up to the F. 
So that's within position one here. It's a C-shaped kind of position, but it's leaning, it's a little bit situated a little bit differently than if it was the C back in position four, right? So I'm in basically possibly my most familiar position. Maybe I want to get my pointer finger from here up to this F up top. So I can noodle around in this position. So, so, so then, then that left me here. So let's do it one more time. So I'm gonna say do. So let's do. I'm trying to get to like right there. So we're like. So now I just slid up to here. Now I'm in this A, basically position where I can basically get down to to this. F if I wanted to get to there, so I can be something like. one and say all right well let's say we go back and say we have this one so that's kind of within my position five notice it doesn't fit perfect because it's normally that f would be within it because we're looking at at playing around the four right but so so if we haven't spent a lot of time within this position here by the way as well but here's my my open f here's the f if i lean it forward then I would have this D-shaped F. There's the purple around here. And, and, and if I lean it forward this way, I'd also be grabbing that F on this side. But when I lean it back, I usually play it like this. So now my finger's on this F. And I can say, okay, well, what if I wanted to move my finger from this F possibly over to here or basically uh, down to here? So if I'm on this F, I could say, all right, well, if I'm, this is my, my pointer finger is going to be right here. So obviously the easiest thing I can do here is take my pointer finger and just pull it into probably my most familiar position. So I could probably just say, all right, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to jump it into position one and then possibly maneuver down here or up here. So I can say, all right, if I'm doing, if I was in here and I started there. over here and I wanted to go the other way go here and then and then maybe I wanted to bring it uh, down to this position is that what I just did so now I'm on this little D position so now my ring fingers on this F which I can convert to this kind of D I mean C shaped F going this way and then of course I can try to get that You know, this F down here. Did I, I think I'm on now. Now I reached up to this F. Anyways, so then let's go. So that's that one. And then if we lean it back one more, then of course we're on our, uh, what I would call open chord, although it's not really an open chord with the F because we're basically still playing a bar chord the way it works out. So E shaped bar chord like this, or like this, or like this. So if I started like this, you would say, how is that going to lead in? How can that help me move forward? Well, now my pointer finger is on this F up top. So I could try to lead that in basically to maybe this F down here and then push that up into this shape. So maybe if, if I was up top, I could say something like... 
notes. Hold on a second. I'm up here. Now I'm down here. So now I'm on this shape. Now I'm going to push this forward. Pushing my pointer forward. So now I'm on this D shape right here, which I'm just going to convert to this maybe. Brings me to this C shape. shape up top and I play it this way so now I'm taking this finger and putting it down here on the C instead so so if I do that then my pointer finger is in a position that I can noodle around in this open position like down here which is kind of fun which allows me to get it to this position nice and easy so I'm at this position double stop, double stop, double stop, double stop and then I can move that up to this position which again, I have these double stops down here, which I can end on that that D shape F. So double stop, double stop, and then up to this D shape F, right? Something like that, and that can convert to the C to the A. So I can so I can be down here and be like. Obviously, once I'm in the F shape, I can screw that up to the, the C shaped F like that, possibly convert it to the A. But So those are just some ideas with how we can kind of move upwards and forwards. I'm always looking at the pointer finger, and I know I wasn't doing it maybe as cleanly as I as you know. Uh, but <laughs> that's the idea with it. I think if we can find the lines uh, by basically looking at those pivoting around those points, and that at least gives you some focus to say, okay, where am I? What am I trying to construct as I'm working horizontally? Uh, from p position to position so that you can start and stop on targeted points, which gives you some kind of aim as you're moving uh, horizontally up and down the fretboard.